detachment from worldly wealth and comforts will help us to move closer to the kingdom of God. Francis was a handsome, witty and gallant young man. He was delighted in fine clothes. His father was rich and so he spent money lavishly. He had his bright clothing, rich friends and he loved all pleasures of life. One day, as a son of a rich cloth merchant, Francis was selling cloth and velvet in the marketplace. A beggar came to him and asked for alms. When his business deal was over, he left the clothes and ran after the beggar. When he found him, Francis gave the man everything he had in his pockets. Seeing this strange behavior, his friends mocked him for his charity. His father was angry and he scolded him in rage. Later, on a pilgrimage to St. Peter's Basilica, he joined the poor in begging. When in a vision he received the message to build the church, he sold some clothes from his father's store to assist the priest in San Damiano. This transformation in Francis took place at a very young age. Francis wanted to identify himself with the poor Christ whom he encountered in his visions, detached from everything in this world and hanging on the cross. He found lady poverty as more rewarding than the riches of the earth. This transformation is what led the young, handsome, rich young man Francis to becoming Saint Francis of Assisi. Detachment from worldly wealth and worldly comforts will help us move closer to the kingdom of God. According to Jesus, the world order of the rich enjoying wealth and the poor suffering misery is reversed in the kingdom of God. The truth is that the poor, the suffering, the weak and the detached enjoy true happiness in heaven rather than the rich. In the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 16 verse 19 onwards, Jesus tells the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man was clothed in purple and fine linen and he fed sumptuously every day. But the beggar Lazarus, full of sores, was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. The rich man was the only person who had the resources to help the needy Lazarus. But he was not willing to do anything for Lazarus. But when the beggar died, he was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was in torments in Hades. He lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Family was everything in ancient Israel and because the rich man is a Jew, he is the son of Abraham. But the rich man did not live like the son of Abraham. We become children of God not by our family or race, but by our good deeds. Lazarus is the only person mentioned by name in Jesus' parables. In Hebrew, Lazarus means the one whom God helps. We can see a reversal of the world order here. Now it is the rich man who is crying for help. The rich man has become the beggar he despised. Have mercy on me, he cries. He longs to become Lazarus, the one whom God helps. But it is too late. We understand the great chasm. But why does Abraham remind the rich man that those who want to pass from here to there cannot? Once we are in hell, it is too late. Now is the time to follow Jesus. Now is the time to be wise stewards. Now is the time to reach out in compassion. God has called us to see people with the eyes of God, for we are all created in the image of God. No matter a person's ethnicity, religion or status, 
God has called us to see people through the lens of Jesus and exercise compassion. Jesus saw people as sheep without a shepherd and he had compassion. We are called to imitate Jesus' compassion so that we can also gain eternal life. In the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy, chapter 6, verse 12, the Apostle reminds us, Lay hold of eternal life, to which you were called, when you made the noble confession in the presence of many witnesses. God wants us to be full of zeal for each other, helping one another with our complacency. In the book of prophet Amos, chapter 6, verse 1, we read, Woe to the complacent in Zion, living upon beds of ivory, stressed comfortably on their couch. There is no time for complacency or useless amusements. There is only time for doing good. May we be able to perceive the needy Lazarus around us and reach out to them in compassion. Let us proclaim with the psalmist, Blessed he who keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed.